my point. You can't be so happy to change shit that you fuck up your life. You know how many celebrities went to Diddy's house. What's up everybody and welcome back to another episode. Please like the video and subscribe. Our target is only a thousand likes. So Sean Diddy Combs is on suicide watch in prison as he awaits trial on sex trafficking and racketeering charges, according to reports. The rapper appeared in court on Wednesday to propose a 50 million bail package to avoid the notorious Metropolitan Detention Center in Brooklyn, but he was denied by the judge. Diddy has been placed on suicide watch as a preventative measure. On Wednesday, Diddy's lawyers argued that he was not a flight risk or dangerous, but they failed to convince the judge. The prosecution shared alleged text messages from Diddy to his ex, Casey Ventura, following the attack on her in 2016 to argue he should remain behind bars until trial. That's my point. You can't be so happy to change shit that you fuck up your life. You know how many celebrities went to Diddy's house. <laughs> thinking they was finna dance. <laughs> How does that feel? You a grown ass man. You gotta leave Diddy party like that. You can't even sit down in the car. You gotta drive all the way home standing up. down. You roll the window down. That breeze hit that open asshole and start blowing and ship starts sailing. A thousand bottles of baby. Uh, I think this is going to be a, you know even bigger than people can imagine. Um, Give me a sense of the volume of videotape and photographic evidence and recordings you have. We are still sifting through hundreds of pictures and video. You know, some of it, it's without context. It's hard to even know uh, what, what this even means or what's, you know, how does this fit into the picture? We've been, I've been sent just unsolicited via email and direct message on social media, videos and pictures and stuff. So we're trying to sift through all that. So I couldn't even give you an estimate. Um, you know, yesterday there was, there was an individual who, of course, did not want to reveal who she was, but was texting me you just video after video after video from some of these so-called freak offs. And I'm just looking at this stuff like, man, I wish this weren't on my phone. Number one. And number two she was texting you on your personal phone. Yeah. Videos yeah. of these freak offs. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, what does that say to you that somebody unsolicited feels so strongly about what's happened to her and others that she would send this material to you? Yeah. And, and I'm trying to, and here I am trying to figure out, first off, you know, I, <laughs> I don't want this stuff on my phone, but laying out. No, of course not. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out the context. Like who, who, who is, who are these people doing these things that you would, you know, you would you typically wouldn't, wouldn't see. And obviously you couldn't, couldn't show it to anybody in public. It's pretty, pretty graphic, but, but, I, you know, I've had, you know, we have this large team of people trying to field all these calls and all these media or this uh, internet contact. And, um, you know, trying to sift through that and, and, and screen that and get people to the next level to start talking to lawyers. And, and the difficulty, as you might expect, is what you want to do is you want to you want to make sure that people believe like, look, you are believed. OK, we believe victims. We're not going to we're not going to we're not here to cross examine you at this point. We're not here to to to, you know, to, to be skeptical. But at some point we have to be, because as you know, these are very difficult cases. These are these, these are difficult cases going against a, a powerful group of people. So at some point, you know, when they get to the third level, hard questions have to be asked. And so we're, 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 we're there's a balance we have to cut here. We have to, on the one hand, make sure that people understand that we believe you. We want to hear what you have to say. We want to hear your story. We want to represent you and help you if we can. On the other hand, you need to understand that this is this is not going to be a cakewalk. You know, this is this is going to be there's going to be a lot of attention on this and they're going to fight, fight us tooth and nail. And the first defense is going to be we never don't know who you are and you're just here to try to get money. And the second defense is, well, if you've proven that we were in the same room together, but we didn't do anything to you. And the entire defense is going to be we're going to attack your character and your lawyer's character. And we're going to attack, you know, from the very beginning. So this is 
I've been down this road before. It's a, it's a difficult road, but the, the fact that we have 120 people who are willing to step forward, who have been vetted now and are, and are ready and willing and able to file their case, we're going to file them under the Jane Doe or the John Doe uh, pseudonym, but we understand that eventually their names will be made public. I'm encouraging them to talk to the Homeland Security and the FBI. Um, I'm encouraging them to allow me to share their names and their information with the authorities. I'm encouraging them that at some point, let's let's step in front of a camera and let's tell your story because there's probably a, a many, many other people out there who, if they see you on the camera and they hear what you have to say and it happened to them, they'll step forward too. So that's kind of where we are in this. And, you know, we're at the tip of the iceberg.